Hi, I'm Edgar, and I'm a software engineer at Google. Hi, I'm Becky, and I'm a software engineer at Google. So, Edgar, the question I'm going to give you today is, uh, I'm going to give you a collection of numbers, and I need you to take this collection of numbers and find a matching pair that is equal to a, a sum that I give you as well. Okay. So, for example, the co collection of numbers could be one, two, three, and nine. And the sum that I'm looking for is eight. Okay. And then another example, just for another set of numbers, could be a one, a two, a four, and a four. And then again, the sum that I'm looking for is eight. So in this case, there, I, I guess uh, what I'm trying to figure out is um, you're looking for a pair of numbers that, that add up to eight. Yes. Right. So in this case, there isn't a pair of numbers that add up to eight. That is true in okay. this example. And in this case, it is because the four and four add up to eight. Correct. Okay. Yes. So this is this would be like a no. And this is yes. Okay. Yes. You ultimately have to <coughs> if the if the pair. Okay. Um, so how are these numbers given? Uh, can I assume that they're kind of like in memory? Um, an array or something? Yeah, they're in memory. You can go with an array. You can also assume that they're in, that they're ordered in ascending order. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, so, how about repeating elements? Can I assume that there will be, like, for instance, here? Uh, what if I, I guess, what what if I didn't have that four? Mm. Could I use like the four and the four to get that eight? You can't repeat the same element at the same index twice, but certainly the same number may appear twice. Like okay. Okay, so like that would be would be a yes. Uh, how about these numbers? Are they integers or are they floating point or? You could assume they'll always be integers. Okay, uh, negatives, positives. Uh, negatives could happen. Okay, cool. So, well, the first, the simplest solution, of course, is just comparing every single possible pair. Uh, so I could just have two for loops one scanning the whole thing, and then the second one starting from, let's say you have the i loop and then the j loop starting from i plus one so that I don't repeat the same value, mm -hmm. and just testing all of them if the sum is equal to the, to the target sum. Uh, I mean, that's obviously not very <laughs> efficient, but that's, that would be like a, a way to solve it. That would work. Uh, it certainly would be time consuming, I think, as yes. far as obstacles is concerned. So is there any kind of example that could yeah. be a little bit yeah, I think that that would be quadratic. So better than quadratic. Uh, well, since it's sorted, so okay, I, I, I guess I need to figure out when I have a number, what I'm looking for is, is if there's another number that sums to eight. So so if I have a one, what I need to figure out is if there's a seven somewhere in the in the um, array. And if that's the case, if it's sorted, then I can just do binary search. Uh, I guess if I go here and I binary search for a seven, mm -hmm. um, then I go here and I binary search for a six, which is the complement of that. And when I go here, I binary search for a five. And in the end, I just don't do anything. And so in this case, I would solve it like that. Uh, so that's a bit better than quadratic. I guess binary search is, is a log uh, algorithm in a sorted list. Um, also a good answer. Okay. But still um, kind of slow. Okay. So what if you took a look at, instead of doing a binary search, which is unidirectional, what if you started with a pair of numbers to begin with? Okay. And then worked your way sort of inward from there? Uh, let's see. So if I, okay, let me try to bound this thing. So the the largest possible sum, I guess, uh, would be the last two values. That would be the largest possible sum, and yeah. And the smallest possible sum would be the, the two smallest, right? right. So, so anything in between, uh, ah, okay, so the range of the possible values is that, right? So there's nothing that is probably small, there's nothing that can be smaller than this value. Right. There's nothing that can be larger than that value. And you have so, somewhere in the middle. 
Okay, so if this um, is 10 in this case, which is too large, mm -hmm. so I need to find a smaller sum. So I could just sort of move this one over here. And if that is too small now, then I need to move that one over there. Okay, so I can I think I can just do it with with that in a in a linear solution, just moving at each iteration. I either move the high one lower mm -hmm. if I am if my pair is too large, mm -hmm. and I move my lower higher if my pair is too small, and I end whenever I either find two, like uh, in this case, I, I either find a pair mm -hmm. that adds up to eight, mm -hmm. or whenever they cross. So at every, at every point I'm moving one of them, so they would have to at least cross, and I move exactly one, so that means that it's linear. Yeah, so that, that would be a, a, a way of solving that problem. And how does, that, how does it make that faster than a binary search? Okay, so in the binary search case, I was doing log for finding, but I had to repeat that for every element. So that was an n log n solution. In this case, I just need to do that moving, scanning the one time. So it's a linear solution. So that's, that's faster. Right, right. Okay. So before, maybe we could get to coding it, but before we, before we do that, maybe you could explain. So you, you explained it in a non-working example. Maybe you could follow through that same process in a working example. Okay, yeah. So here I would start with this mm -hmm. and that, right? So it's five, it's smaller than eight. So I move this one here. So that's six, that's smaller than eight. Mm -hmm. So I go here and then that's eight. So that's true and I return. Excellent. Yeah, I think that would work. Okay, so what coding language would you prefer to, to do this in? Um, I, I prefer C++ if that's okay. C++ works. Okay. Right, go for it. Ah, perfect. Let's see. So, okay. Uh, now I realize that I haven't figured out what I need to return. Mm. So, do I want the pair, the indices of the pair, or whether I just found it or not? So, uh, for the purposes of the example, we'll go with whether you found it or not. But let's say you were going to return the pair. How could that become a problem okay. if there was no pair? So, I mean, building the pair would be easy, right? Mm -hmm. So, I, I would just return the pair. If I didn't find it, then I would need to return some sort of, like, boolean. So, I guess I could make a data structure that has a boolean that denotes whether the pair is valid or not. Mm -hmm. Like, has, mm -hmm. has it been found? So yeah. like, a, like a bool found, and then a pair uh, values or something like that. And wrapped, combine those together, wrapped. yeah. And then this is the thing that you return. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not very elegant, but it's workable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Rather than going with the custom object, maybe we'll just return a, a Boolean then. Okay, that, that makes it a lot easier, yes. But it's good to know that you thought about what might you might have to do if there is no viable result. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's just call it pass pair with sum, I guess. Let's sure. Just, uh, and so I, I'm okay just repeating whatever. I would like to repeat it as a vector, say. Vector is fine, yeah, sure. And we said ints are fine. Ints are fine. Uh, this is my data. And then I have an int, which is my sum. Okay, so like I said, I want sort of an int, uh, my low, which is zero, and then my high, which is uh, the data size minus one. And then what I'm gonna do is while these are, while, while, while my low is strictly lower than my high, mm -hmm. okay, as soon as they are touching, then I know that I can't guarantee that they're different. So that, that's where I should stop. Okay, my, well, my low is less than my high. And this also solves the problem of what happens if this is empty. Because then if this is empty, this would be a minus one. Mm -hmm. And then that would be violated. So I would never enter and access any of the values. So that's, that's fine. Mm -hmm. So while low is less than high, I guess if my data at low plus my data at high is the same as my target, uh, my target, which is called sum, 
Mm -hmm. Then I have found it. That's it. That's my pair. And here's where I would construct that pair if I needed to return it. Mm -hmm. But let's just say for now I can just return true. Now, if this is larger than sum and this is lower than sum, so I think I'm better than just doing it three times. I'm just going to store it in a, in a variable, uh, which is my s stat, and then say if s is my sum, then return true. Okay, I'm going to stop you right there. Okay. Excellent solution. I see what you're getting at here. But now I'm going to throw a little wrench into the mix for you. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I can no longer guarantee for you that the numbers <laughs> in this collection are sorted. Okay, so... You have to think of a different way to, s s to compare them against each other. Now. I mean, it, if the first thing I do is just sort, of course, then I, I solve this problem the sure. same way, right? Sure. So that would be still an n log n solution. It would. Which would be like the same as, as the, the binary search yeah. as well. But it's too you big want, for Google. Okay, so you want no. faster than that, okay. <laughs> <sighs> okay, let's see. So if I go back to this idea, okay, so let me erase this. If I go back to this idea of when I look at a number, what I need to figure out is if the complement is in the rest. The complement uh, meaning the, the, the Yeah, the h minus this value, right? And in this case, when I have the one, mm -hmm. I need to figure out if seven is in the rest. Yes. Okay. If I cannot sort, and searching that will be linear, so that's not a very good idea. Mm -hmm. But maybe I can do it the other way around. So I build it up little by little, and instead of just sort of asking a blanket, is there anywhere, I just ask, have I seen it in the past? So for instance, if I'm here, what I need to find out is if I have seen eight minus three. Have I seen five in the past? That would work. Um, so you'd have to store five. Or I guess it's the same, but I could be storing the complements and I just ask, have I seen three as a complement of anything of the things before? Yep. So like I, I insert a seven when I see a one. Sure. I insert a six if I see a two. You insert the complement. And then, yes, I insert the complement. And then when I get here, I ask, is, the com is this the complement of anything I have seen in right, the past? Right. So I can do I can use a data structure that is very good for for lookups. Okay. Right. So I can do something like a hash table, which has like a constant time lookup. Um, hash table though. Hash table. Do you need a key in this case? I I guess I don't need a. I mean I just need the value the 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 elements. I don't I don't actually want to store any payload. So yeah, I guess a hash set would be the, the thing to do. So I hash set all of the complements and then I look for them. I, I need to be careful though. Uh, how am I gonna deal with the case of uh, repeated mm -hmm. elements? Uh, so I don't want to be able to say, oh, I have a four. Yes, of course I have a four, I'm done, right? I, if, if I have this, I have a four, I have it, so I'm done. That would be a wrong solution. Mm, I guess I need to be careful there. So, okay, okay, okay. So here's an idea. I only look for things, so when I'm here, I only look for things that I have seen before. So as long as I check before I insert things, mm -hmm. that should work. And then when I add it here, this one will find that because it's in the previous one. So I, I think that works. Yeah. That's it. Um, that's brilliant. Okay. Very well. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, so, like I was saying, bool of has a pair with sum with my, oh, okay. Can I just like uh, my vec, I mean, it's a const vector <laughs> and data, and then my int sum. Okay. So I need a hash set. So in C++, that's an unordered set. Of integers still. And I'm going to call it complements. Uh, well, I don't want to write complements all the time. So I'm just going to call it comp and say these are the complements. 
as in whatever I need to get the target sum. Yep. And so as I said, I just need to be building it up little by little. So I do a for uh, my int uh, value for each of the values in the data. Mm -hmm. I am going to first check and then insert. So if my complement, so I check if I have seen it. First, yep. And if I have seen it, so that means if it's not in the end, mm -hmm. then that's it. Um, that should be our return true. Because this current element and something that I have seen in the past add up to the sum. Mm -hmm. So obviously it depends on what I've been inserting, so that's what I'm going to do here. My complements is going to be inserting, I, I, I don't remember, I think it's add for an another set, but there's, there's something. Um, it's either add or insert or something, yeah. Uh, 